My name is Honorable Alhaji Mbo, a member of parliament from the Gambia, um, uh, representing um, Oposalom constituency um, that is in the central river region of the Gambia. And I'm also serving on my second term in the Pan-African Parliament. Yeah, um, thank you. Um, uh, I think we've been participating both in the committees and also in our caucus as well, because um, the West African Caucus, uh, being the chairperson of the West African Caucus, um, um, we were able to put together our thoughts on various issues that are actually affect in PAP, uh, particularly on what we can do together as a caucus or as a, you know, as a, uh, as a team to improve uh, PAP and the way we are viewed outside there in the public. Now, we were able to put together, um, uh, at the beginning of the session, um, we were able to put together a document uh, making recommendations. Um, uh, the first is, um, for example, what can we do to make PAP better? And I think one of the issues we highlighted is our own internal rules of procedure. So we've agreed that really our rules need um, a proper um, a fine tuning. There are a lot that actually needs to change, um, especially in terms of elections, um, especially in terms of rotations, especially in terms of how the committees work. So I think our, I was able to chair the committee of the West African Caucus um, to be able to give a very good, um, very good and very solid feedback um, to the bureau and then to the plenary as a whole um, to ensure that we capture some of the things that we really need to do to move the parliament forward. At the level of my committee also, um, as a member of the um, uh, transport, um, uh, you know, uh, energy industry, science and, science and technology um, uh, committee, um, uh, we had some extensive deliberation, especially on artificial, artificial intelligence. And uh, being a software engineer, it really touches on really what I do for a living, uh, not only in the Pan-African Parliament, but also like my, my, you know, what I do outside the Parliament. Um, uh, again, I think it was very important for people to really understand where we are actually going in terms of artificial, artificial intelligence and I think our committee actually has done a, um, a good job in uh, asking a lot of questions to the presenters about the AU stand as far as a AI is concerned and uh, my uh, intervention um, during the session was along the lines of um, human rights you know um, countries uh, people companies are developing AI uh, but uh, they are not really taking into consideration the human rights aspect of the artificial intelligence. And I think that's really something very important. And I was calling the attention of the AU to ensure that they take that into consideration. Because um, uh, what the way things are going right now across the world, um, uh, AI is being used, you know, you know, anyway. But I think it's very important that they also take into consideration the human rights aspect of um, uh, AI, just to ensure that we have um, uh, um, systems or we have um, um, uh, applications uh, that would take those into consideration. But above all, you know, we are we are we are using AI, for example. In Africa, in various forms, for example, these drones people are talking about in terms of identifying flooded areas, in terms of identifying um, areas with uh, you know bushfires, etc., etc. But for me, I think we need to be able to use AI to help us actually be able to predict droughts where countries or where the AU can actually um, put uh, some, 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 some plans in place to ensure that they can mitigate those, those areas. But if you wait until a flood actually happens and then you use AI to be able to say, oh, this particular area is flooded, another area is flooded, but I think let's have something that would help us in the prediction that we may have flood in this particular area, in this particular region, in this particular country. So those predictions is also going to help the countries to be able to plan, especially the national disaster agencies that we have in many countries, to be able to plan better. But uh, those issues are not available to them. Uh, disaster will actually occur and they will use drones to go and find out oh, what's happening in a particular area. But for me, what is quite important is to use AI to predict what may actually happen um, uh, and that will make them prepare for the better. Um, I, I think um, there's a lot we can do um, as an African parliament. But first, um, uh, um, uh, countries must take it up to ensure they ratify the Malabar Protocol. Because the Malabar Protocol actually is going to allow the PAP uh, to be a, a, a real parliament. Right now we are not a real parliament, right now we are just doing an advisory role. And uh, the work of PAP should go beyond that. And if you look at right now, we are, in fact, just yesterday I was trying to um, talk to some of my people to have strategies in place where West Africa would ratify. Right now, if you look at the countries that actually have ratified, 50% of the countries came from West Africa, the Malabar Protocol. 
So, so essentially, we have 14 ratifications. Seven of them came from West Africa. So I urge my other colleagues also to ensure that they, they continue to do more work. And uh, you know, so that this will be ratified and the parliament will be full-fledged parliament. Being a full-fledged parliament actually has a lot of advantages uh, for the African people. Because we can, we, we can begin to hold um, uh, member states accountable for what they're doing, for the African people. Uh, but unless and until we do that, it's going to be really very difficult. Um, uh, because uh, the EU actually has um, a lot of organs. Uh, but PAP is the no, no, third organ. So it's very different from our countries where we have separation of powers, where we have the judiciary, we have the parliament, and also we have the executive. In the AU, it's a little bit different. And that's the reason why PAP may not be able to hold anybody accountable at this stage until we are a full-fledged parliament, um, uh, and until then, we are just playing advisory roles. So and I think it's about time we urge all the other countries that actually have not ratified to go and ratify this protocol, and we can come and work together. And I believe there is nothing any country should be fear of. Um, uh, I mean, PAP will not be taking over the EU or something. No, that, that's not that's going to happen. We're just going to ensure that the monies that our countries actually are contributing to the EU is put to best use and is put for the betterment of the African people. African people, not only in Africa, but African people also in the diaspora, because they are also all part of us. So um, that's why I just want to urge my people also, just to ensure that they go and ratify these things and give us the powers to be able to legislate on common laws. You know, right now, you know, we are just doing advice. And then again, when you give advice to somebody, it's up to them to, uh, to accept or not to accept. But once you have the powers to be able to legislate, then that means you are no longer giving advice, but you are actually giving directives and to ensure that we are also very consistent. We need to protect our continent and we need to work together. There is no other option, but we need to work together as a continent to ensure our resources actually are well utilized for the African people.